Today we drove from Abilene to uh, Newcastle, Texas to meet a uh, friend of mine who has a brand new old camera. And uh, he restored it completely from actually nothing to what it is right now. And uh, we're going to ask him a few questions, do a little interview, uh, see what he can tell me about his truck and the, the work he's doing with it. I know your name, but can you uh, introduce yourself? I'm Mark Herenstein. And you're, uh, you're born in? I was born in Iowa, and uh, my dad had a feedlot and a farm up there. And then we moved to Texas when I was 14 years old in 1983. And uh, yeah, me and my family moved down here. We lived in Seymour, Texas. But uh, yeah, I started trucking, I guess when I was, uh, 15 years old on wheat harvest and did that for probably four summers while I was still in school and then uh, then I when I was 19 I started hauling cattle for outfit out of Seymour and uh, uh, that was in 80 87 I guess and uh, started hauling cattle for eastern livestock and you know local ranchers around Seymour and, and uh, drove an old Kenworth pretty much like this one right here. And uh, uh, that's all I've ever wanted to do, just uh, drive truck and, which is, I prefer hauling cattle. I've hauled grain and, and hay and a lot of ag commodities, stuff like that, but uh, I really enjoy hauling cattle the most. You know, that's, that's been a little over 30 years now, I guess. So. I, I got a lot. I got several questions on my paper. You already a, uh, answered a few of them. Um, the the thing is, you said I rather haul cattle, but why is that? You you grew up in that in in the cattle uh, business. Business. Uh, you More knew people that are having uh, farms and ranches with cattle, and you were always were in the cattle. Yeah, yeah. My dad, like I said, had a feedlot and stuff, and. And when I was probably eight, nine years old and help them sort cattle, me and my mom and my sister and just kind of a family thing and just, I don't know, kind of feel comfortable around it, you know, and there's the people that you that you uh, deal with in the cattle industry are, you know, generally good people and, and uh, just from the country and that's just all I've been around all my life and just more comfortable around that, I guess. and, and uh, the guy that hauled my dad's cattle when I was a kid, he uh, he's still hauling cattle to this day. He's like 76 years old now, and, and uh, he let me ride with him when, when I was a kid, and, and uh, I probably talked his ear off, you know, but I learned a lot from him. He was a good guy, but uh, I just, that's all I've ever wanted to do. Is, is, uh, is, is that the best way to uh, learn how to uh, haul cattle? Uh, go with uh, the uh, all the people. Yeah, yeah. There's only one way to to learn how to haul cattle is just get in there and do it. You know, and but you know, and it's a whole different deal when you're in a, with a pen of cattle than it is when in in that trailer and you try to put them in a compartment they don't want to go in. You know, mm -hmm. and uh, you you got to think about what you're doing and and be smart or you'll get hurt. And it happens quick. So uh, yeah. So. Do you believe that people halt cattle for, say, 20 years, 25 years and never got hurt, never got in trouble? You believe that? No, they just got lucky. They're I mean, lucky. That's, that's kind of like a bull rider. It's, it doesn't, you know, it's just a matter of time. It's going to happen because uh, you're dealing with live animals that, that are, you know, not used to being cooped up. Yeah, they're not trained yet to listen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's... Uh, that's kind of a hard thing to to train somebody to do, but it, but uh, it's more of a hands-on on, on uh, experience than it is to you can't you can't learn it in a schoolroom or or sit down and tell somebody you know how to do it because because every load is different you know every every load of cattle you might have some cattle that'll just load right up and and then some of them they'll run back at you and and run you over you know mm -hmm. if you're not careful so yeah. But uh, it's all, and you gotta kind of know what they're thinking, or 
kind of guess at what they're thinking to uh, to outsmart them or, or bluff them. You know, you got to. And and that's the experience, of course. Yeah, yeah. That's the experience by doing it a lot. You know, you're more comfortable. You, you don't know what they're gonna do, but you you expect more like the unexpected what yeah. they're gonna do. Yeah, yeah. Right? You can kind of sense, you know, kind of sense what they're what they're gonna do. You know, you, especially like them old killer cows and and uh, canners and stuff like that. That uh, they're either sick or you know we've got a fever or something like that, and they're just loco in the head you know you just you um, sometimes they're uncontrollable you just got to do your best to to uh, get them in that compartment that, that they need to go in you know and some of them you you put them in with a bunch of you know or several other cattle to get them calmed down you, if you put them by themselves and and try to force them in there they're not going to go you know they're just going to come right back at you or, or not cooperate you know yeah Hey Mark, um, I see you got mesh on it. I I I didn't understand what it meant because I thought mesh on it, mesh on it, and then I start realizing it's actually mesh on it. Yes, sir. What does that mean? Just mashing on the gas. That when you're hauling cattle, you know they they want you to get there as quick as possible because they don't like the the shrink of the cattle, you know, or or. Uh, the way Eastern Livestock used to do it, they they wanted you to keep a 50 mile an hour average on when you loaded to when you unload, you know, and uh, back when it was 55 mile an hour, you know, it was kind of hard to do. You had to you had to mash on it, you know. So that's just where it come from. Okay. I had to back in the 90s. I had a cow trailer that had that on the marquee light, and so then when I built this truck and and that trailer, uh, I just decided to make my company name mash on it cool man can you tell something about this truck that you uh, rebuilt completely you did it all by yourself yes sir yeah it's a 1968 model and i bought it down there at mineral wells and it was uh had been parked for over 20 years and just sitting behind an old diesel shop down there and the motor was tore down and and uh the old rear ends and transmission and the driver's window was busted out of it and the radiator was stolen out of it and it was just a, a mess you know the, everything was rotten the the wiring and the airlines and all that was uh, was no good so I just had to completely pretty much gut it and, and pulled the old motor and transmission out of it and and uh, took some rear ends off a newer model truck that's air ride and and uh, stretched the frame and then I and then I put, the, it's got a B model cat in it and 15 speed and, and uh, completely redid all the wire and all the air lines and, and uh, put different steps and fuel tanks and just pretty much everything, you know. And, and I built it all out of salvage parts. There's, there's not a whole lot of new parts on this thing. And that's just, that's kind of the way I like to do it. I, I uh, which I've always had a, kind of a poor boy operation. I was in the trucking business for 15 years back in the 90s and early 2000s and, and uh, never was a, a rich kid or had anything, you know, family money or stuff. I just had to get by with what I could and, and uh, that's kind of the way I built this old truck. Just so I got a lot, of, a lot of good friends, you know, old trucking friends of mine that's uh, helped me along the way with, with different parts and stuff. And, and uh, it's really neat to, to be able to build a truck like this and, and drive it, you know, once you... You said you, you bought that truck for $2,500? Yes, sir. Um, how much money did you spend from that time? Oh, I'm, oh yeah, like... No, you don't have to go in details, oh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, on an average, like, say... Oh, I've probably got, I would say, $10,000 invested in it. And if you would count the uh, hours of work in it. Oh man, yeah, that's uh, to me it's priceless. You mm -hmm. know, it's it's uh, something that I was able to do myself because of being around trucks my whole life and working on them. You know, nobody knows is born to you know be able to work on a truck, but over the years, you know, you learn stuff here and there, and, and just. Just like hauling cattle and stuff, you just gain experience over the years, and and uh, was able to 
be able to build a truck like this myself. And yeah. It's something I'm really proud of. But. Can you uh, show me something or show me some things that you uh, changed to it and that, that you had to do, like your engine? Yeah. And I didn't tell you this. I didn't know if you knew it or not, but I had an accident when I was working on this truck. I, uh, I just got it running and uh, put the drive shaft in it, drive line. I didn't have the brakes and wiring and stuff like that finished on it yet. And uh, I had, uh, was kind of in a hurry one evening. Well, this is the motor. It's a B model cat. It's got a turbo off of 550 cat. And uh, it it does a good job. It runs good. Had a little trouble with the oil cooler here a while back, and had to replace it and stuff like that. But uh, it's a well, it's a 400 horse. It come out with a with the air to air intake on it. But uh, I put the water jacket after cooler on it. But. Uh, but when I was building it, I, I put the transmission in gear to tighten the nut on the back of the transmission for the drive shaft yoke and put the drive line in that morning. And, and then I was, when I was working for Creole Farms and was working on their trucks. And so I come back that evening and I was wanting to test drive it. You know, I was kind of uh, anxious to take it down the road for the first time. So. I wasn't thinking and I had a key switch rigged up right here on the motor because all the wiring and stuff was bad in the cab so I just reached in here and I was standing right here and, and cranked the motor up and it was inside the shop. Well, the motor started right away and it lunged forward and that front of the hood hit the back wall of the shop and it closed that hood on me and it slammed me right straight down I was stuck right here in that, that spot and it broke two vertebrae in my back, broke my sternum, my collarbone, and this breather cut my ear in half. Well, when I come to, I was, you know, just kind of delusional. It had knocked me out. I don't know how long I was jammed up under there, but uh, I come to and I could feel, you know, I was busted up inside and stuff. and I staggered walk to my pickup and and this was like the shop was three miles from where I live here and, and I drove myself home that was like eight o'clock in the evening and eight o'clock the next morning I come to and I was laying on my bedroom floor and uh, called my boss and told him he needed to call the ambulance because I was in bad shape you know I'd but uh, this fender still I leave it like that just kind of a reminder but uh, I stayed three days in the hospital they care fly to me to Fort Worth and uh, about 60 days I was laid up and and thank God I, I everything I didn't have any have any surgeries or or anything like that fully fully recovered and which I'm a diesel mechanic now I, I kind of part-time uh, drive this old which I drive this old truck to work every day and uh, but I'm a decent mechanic now, so men pulling wrenches and stuff, it doesn't bother me, you know, my back or anything. So uh, I was really blessed not to not to be, you know, permanently injured or whatever from that accident. But uh, it happened, so me and this old truck already got a lot of history together, and it's only been, I've owned it three years now, so. <laughs> yeah. What about the, uh, what about the cap itself? You bought it like this? Yeah, yeah. It uh, the paint was it was sitting underneath the tree all that time, and it kind of had black all stuff off that tree, you know, that had mm -hmm. settled on it. And, mm -hmm. and luckily, I I uh, pressure washed it and got it all cleaned up, and the paint was still pretty decent. It's you know it's got some stuff paint flaking off, but but it still looks looks neat. And, and to repaint one of these is pretty expensive, so yeah. I'm, I'm glad it, it turned out the way it did. Didn't have to do a new paint job on it, but everything else I pretty much replaced or 
the steer axle and the frame and the cab and the hood and the sleeper is about all that's you know original as far as uh, what came on it from the factory but but uh, can you show me the interior yeah yeah I was uh when I built the truck I've got two sticks in it but uh, the four speed auxiliary stick isn't hooked up to anything yet I'm, my plans are to put a four speed auxiliary behind this 15 speed and I will eventually I just hadn't uh, hadn't done it yet but the the interior is pretty much done I've, the interior of the sleeper still needs to be finished but uh, as far as the seats and the, all the gauges work and the, everything so you said a little window here in the back you have to crawl through to yeah. get in your sleeper yes sir yeah it's a crawl through sleeper they call it and the, the old kenworths that came from the factory with a roll up window in between the cab and the sleeper and uh since my sleeper's not finished it it's uh it worked out good for me where i can just roll that window up and and uh, just kind of run it as a day cab now so it doesn't have a you know weather coming in or whatever so when it's raining and I can stay dry. <laughs> and it's your original sleep, you say? Yes, sir. How, how wide is it? It's a 36 inch. Yeah. Uh, some people call them a coffin sleeper. Some call them a, well, they actually it's called a crawl through sleeper for the crawl through opening, but it's a, just a single sleeper. And uh, the back panel is kind of rare for these old Kenworths from the late 60s and early 70s. Had what they call a ripple back and it's just kind of a pleated back panel there in the center and you don't see many of them anymore so i kind of unique and like the exhaust pipes and stuff like that all that's i just welded together tips of exhaust pipe you know two of them and then then the elbows and all that just it's kind of a rat rod theme i don't know uh, just one of them things that I like to do that makes it original or you know one of a kind that a lot of people don't even think about doing as far as uh, stuff like that I just kind of like to do it to say I did it you know yeah. say I could do it and you stretch it a little bit yes sir it was a 205 wheelbase originally the the original frame ended like right here so it was real short and, and uh, when I worked for Creole Farm, Sam said that, you know, we were going to use it to haul cattle and hay and grain and stuff like that, that, the, that it wouldn't be feasible as far as the, couldn't even hardly hook a cow trailer up to it with the kingpin setting so deep on them. And, and they had this uh, Freightliner air ride suspension and uh, so they let me have it and and I added it onto the back of the frame rails and, and uh, lengthened it to a 280 wheelbase now and, and it, uh, it works out real nice, it's got a good ride to it and and, uh, and I can pull pretty much any trailer you know available. I got to, I extended the the slide on the fifth wheel so it can slide back further as far as like pulling a low boy or something like that. And then when you haul hay if you got a cradle up front you know where your round bales hang off halfway off the front of the trailer you still got room there too so it works out good you know yeah i've got it's one thing you don't see much anymore either is a hubometer uh we used to run them back years ago the, a lot of times them old cable driven speedometers they didn't you know they'd break a cable or whatever and this is just an accurate way to to uh, run your mileage and it runs right off the axle it just it's a every time you the wheel turns it just clicks clicks off the miles and i've got a little over eighteen thousand miles on it now since i rebuilt it so and it's held together good i uh since i'm a diesel mechanic now i put a phil brewer a good friend of mine another cattle hauler he's got a wrecker attachment and I use it once in a while if we have a broke down truck I gotta go rescue I'll hook it up and, and haul it in and 
stuff like that. So then I got this old cow trailer I rebuilt, and uh, just not guy can't use it to haul cattle anymore. But it's uh, it's a neat old trailer, 73 model Wilson, 42 foot, 96 wide, slat side, center load. It's kind of just a neat old trailer to remind the guys of how it used to be, you know. But I've taken it to a couple shows already and just kind of show it off and painted it to match my truck. And, and uh, you got a good response to it? Yeah. People like it? Yes, sir. Yeah. And is it more like the old people that like it like the older people that like it or even the youngsters well it's it's uh, kind of surprising that it's pretty much everybody the the a lot of the newer guys coming up that uh, that really get into these old trucks and stuff that uh, that really like that stuff because they have never seen it you know before or everything they've they've uh, been around is newer newer equipment and, mm -hmm. and it's kind of neat to see the old stuff and and uh, yeah, they ask a lot of questions about it, and, and uh, I'm just thankful. I've you know I've been in the in the business for right at 30 years now. So yeah, yeah, I know a couple of guys from uh, Balco, Oklahoma. They're interested in old uh, old school trucks also. Yeah, I think uh, Alex Kramer and uh, Brian Olvera. They they both drive uh, the older trucks and. Not the new stuff, and that's uh, actually quite good to see. Yeah. yeah and they want to keep it in 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 shape and show the people that we got a. Of course, the newer trucks are nice too, but the older trucks is the history of of yeah. the cattle trucking, and to keep that in in uh, on the road, that's a good thing. Yeah. Yeah, and a lot of these guys, you know, they're rebuilding these trucks. They're putting the newer model motors and transmissions, the electronic, computerized motors, and that's that's, uh, you know, it. Uh, as far as the DOT and everything else, is more modern and and uh, which I'm, I just like these old mechanical motors because they're easier to work on and and uh, I don't know if they break down on the side of the road nine times out of ten. You know, you can get them going. It it just takes diesel and. You got one hot wire from your battery going to your fuel pump, you know, to your solenoid to kick it in to get fuel to your injectors, and that's all. That's all it needs. You know? yeah. And these newer ones, it it uh, it's a computer nightmare, pretty much. You got to be, you got to have the equipment to diagnose the computer, whatever sensors going bad or or what have you, and uh, a lot of times they just got to hook it up to a wrecker and, and haul it in, which which means more expense and and uh, everything else. Yeah, I can remember that I had a a truck in in Europe and it had a seal on the back and we could not even lift up the cap no more because that would be the end of the warranty. Yeah. And it was only allowed by the shop, so we couldn't do anything about. It. Of course, we could change the oil yep. and measure the water and see if you got some problems with that. But for the rest, engine wise, you couldn't do anything. Yeah. Yeah. Not allowed. Just tow it away and go to the next shop and wait till they're done. Yep, and that's that's the way the engineers design it from the factory, you know, so they can keep their dealership in business. Is they've they've got to design stuff like that to keep all their company stuff going. You yeah, know, which is which is understandable, but it it makes it hard for the for the average guy out there to afford that kind of stuff. Yep, yep. And like this old cab over here, I bought this cab over just just. Uh, to fix up, that's my next project, and uh, they're starting starting to come back, be popular again. Uh, they were kind of phased out for a while, you know. They they're not even making them new. As far as in America, I think they still do some overseas, but uh, you know the resale value was the biggest thing. They couldn't them companies that have a bunch of cab overs that they'd want to trade in and they couldn't trade them in for anything because they weren't worth nothing nobody wanted them yeah. but uh, now people are starting to fix them up again and they're starting to become popular so yeah kind of a comeback and their need I, I drove several different old cab overs over the years and and they're good trucks they're just 
you got to climb in them, you know, and, and lay on your back, pull your britches on when you're in the bunk. To, yep, been there, done that. A few, a few things that are that aren't quite as convenient as the conventional is, but uh, look there. It's going to be a neat project. This old that old truck set for a long time too, and was used for a parts truck. They they took a lot of parts off of it, you know, and used them on other trucks that they were running. But I just found it and thought I couldn't live without it, so that's what I'm going to do next. <laughs> Going to the bottom nose, it, uh, it's a full length, full width uh, counterbalance. And I don't know why Wilson built them like that, I guess for fat cattle or something back years ago, but uh, when you load cattle, they go right down in that down that ramp and with a full width all they do is make a big circle and they come right back out at you you know so you got to be quick as far as <laughs> getting the cattle in there damn i'm getting too old oh. yeah. this bailing water is not factory either See, it's even a roll-up door here. You don't much see anymore. Some people like them like that. I don't know. I never really cared for them. Like this trailer doesn't even have a center center divide gate, so you're just you're wide open there, you know, to try to get them cattle in this one compartment. Yeah. But it's kind of a poor design thing. That's the way it used to be. Got that again. You got two big pins here. You say how old is this trailer? Seventy-three. So that's 40, 46 years old. Yeah. Let's see your, for your top nose, you just got a little gate here, a little ramp, and it's coming open, but see all this area is open. So you gotta try to get your cattle in there. See all your new traders has got a, got a funnel gate. Mm -hmm. This doesn't, you just, yeah, yeah, one you big just gotta get them forced in there, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And the new trailers you can stand up. And see this doesn't even have a jailhouse in it or a kitchen, you know what they yeah, call yeah, it. Because yeah. it's a center load, so yeah. so if you gotta deck out on these, you gotta fill your trailer up and then wait a minute for the driver to put his deck boards in the back to deck out. So yeah. just, these old trailers just took more time to load, you know. And you haul these trailers also? Yeah. Yeah, not a center load. Uh, the trailer I started out with was about this length. It was a 44 foot, but the same width. When you get in a 102 trailer, it seems like it's six foot wider, you know, in here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But uh, there's only six inches difference, but it makes a lot of difference as far as when you're in here trying to get cattle to do what you're supposed to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's hot in here. It is, it is. Mark, you told me you started driving cattle when um, you were 19, yes, sir. Uh, in 1987. Yes, sir. I came to Texas in 2012 and started making videos and photos of cattle trucks from that time, so that's only like seven years ago. Can you tell me something about 30 years ago? Well, back when I started, 
the trailers were smaller for one. Um, first trailer I pulled was a 44 foot, 96 wide, kind of like that Wilson that I've got. But um, and we'd still haul, you know, 50,000 plus pounds of cattle in them, and, and you just had to stack them in every compartment there was. Which nowadays with a 53 foot, you use, you know, like wheat pasture cattle or the bigger cattle, you only use three or four compartments. And uh, and it makes it easier for the cattle to ride and, and uh, easier on the cattle. But back then it was, I mean, every 50 or 100 miles, you had to stop and check your cattle because if they were laying down, they'd get trampled or, or stepped on and, and uh, what have you. So it was just uh, basic knowledge. Everybody stopped, you know, every 100 miles or so to check your cattle and get them up and make sure they're riding all right. And, and uh, was it was it 30 years ago the same what I know about uh, movies? You all drive together in the convoy? Yeah. Yeah, they're, yeah, back when, you know, we'd load around here hauling wheat pasture cattle, there'd be 10 or 12 of us, you know, or, or uh, a lot of times there was at least four or five, you know, that uh, would load and, and everybody, whenever you, somebody bumped the chute, you know, or every other driver got out and helped you load and, and uh, move up to the next one and, until you were done and then everybody get in their truck and we'd go, you know, and uh, run together and because and shoot back then you had tube type tires, you know, and you couldn't run them flat for very long or you'd, you'd uh, you just have to air them up, you know, and, and uh, keep going. But uh, a lot of stuff like that 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 has changed over the years, and, and even like power steering and air conditioning. Uh, oh, you didn't have air conditioning that time. Oh, we did, you know, and, and but the guys I wrote, drove for, and, and uh, I mean, we'd get the air conditioner going the first of the year, and uh, but if it went out. You know, sometimes you just had to keep running, roll your windows down, tough it out. And that, you just couldn't, you know, park your truck and say, fix the air conditioner. You know, you, you had loads to haul or whatever. You, just, you had to keep going. But uh, like the power steering deal, even this truck doesn't have power steering. And I've kind of hard headed about keeping it that way. I don't know how, how long my shoulder is going to hold out, but, but uh, it's just something that you don't see anymore. Everybody's used to power steering, you got little steering wheels and all that stuff. This one's still got the old 22 inch steering wheel and every time you make a corner, you gotta pull on it, you know, and you yeah. gotta work at it. To... How were the roads uh, back then? Oh, they were decent, you know. I would say the, you know, a few more two lanes, but in 87, there was, you know, uh, like 287 and Say like Wichita Falls, I remember when we'd haul grain to Charlie Myers over there on the other side of Wichita, we'd, the highway coming from Seymour, we'd have to stop at every stop sign there before they finish the expressway. And, and I always told the guys I was running with, I said, boy, it'd sure be nice to run that expressway, you know, one of these days. And now they got it finished and I'm not hauling over there anymore, so. <laughs> yeah, you'll see that. You'll see that happen. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, as far as the, the old trucks, you know, they're just a lot more things seemed to break down back then, you know. Was, uh, your overhaul didn't last near as long, and them old Cummins motors and, and cats, too, you know. If you got five, six hundred thousand miles out of overhaul, you know, you're doing good. And nowadays, you buy a new truck and you expect eight hundred thousand to a million miles before you got to overhaul it. So, Things like that, and and we used to do our own mechanic work, you know, as far as and I still do myself. But uh, a lot of guys back then, if uh, you know, head gasket blowed or anything like that, you just pull it in your old shop or borrow a shop or or have have somebody help you work on it to get it done, and get it put back together, so you can get back out there on the road. Yep. And. Uh, like I was telling you before, the guy that I used to work for, I drove a Kenworth like this one, and he had a cab over International too, and that old cab over International was a good, solid truck, you know, it was, but the Kenworth was a nicer truck, so 
and uh, the motor in the Kenworth was wasn't as dependable and it'd break down so he had a good set of drive tires a good set of eight drive tires on one truck so if that truck would break down we'd have to pull it in the shop and swap all eight drive tires and put them on that old cab over so we could go trucking again the next day that was just part of it and that a lot of a lot of guys over there at Seymour at one time Seymour Texas there was 26 cow trucks in that little town and uh, there were just a lot of cattle moving around, you know, that area and in and out of that area. But uh. can you tell me a story about one of your um, hauling experiences? Oh, I've got several. I'm trying to think of one off the top of my head. Um, no, we we used to haul a lot out of haul a lot of Meridian, Mississippi, Meridian order buyers. And uh, Bull Creek trucking there out of out of Seymour, they hauled out of there a lot and with us. And and the owner, which he didn't drive a whole lot, but he'd fill in driving, you know. And and uh, well, he was driving one of his trucks, and and uh, my ex brother-in-law was driving for him, and and I was in my old Kenworth. And we loaded dirt Meridian going out out to Kansas, and and uh, which Interstate 40 is kind of curvy and stuff and I mean interstate 20 uh, kind of curvy and stuff there between Meridian and Jackson and, and uh, which we run that road a lot you know we'd load out of there twice a week and and uh, the owner of the trucks he was in between us and and uh, well we was running probably 80 85 mile an hour you know or close to 90 and fast as they'd go and, and uh, we about got to Jackson and and uh, he come over to CB radio and he said uh, said Jay Bo you're gonna have to get up there and run the front door on us. He said, said if old Frankenstein stays up there on the front door, he said I won't be able to smoke a cigarette for another 14 hours. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we were making him a little nervous. Oh yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's just uh, been a lot of fun over the years. It's uh, a lot of good people. A lot of good friends, but that's, uh, do you do you see in the, a difference between then and now? Oh yeah, um, I mean as far as the cattle all and even the younger guys, there's there's a lot of good guys out there now that uh, that are coming up that that have the respect, you know that uh, that there used to be and that was lost there for a while, but uh, it's coming back. Yeah. Well, what would be good advice for the younger people and even people that that say um, the uh, that they've been hauling other stuff for say five, ten years, and you see a lot of people uh, in our group also that that say I want to haul cattle, yeah. but they don't have any experience in cattle. They they're they're good drivers, yeah, and but they've never hauled cattle. They've been around Cal, they say, but yeah. what, what, would, what would be good advice from you to say, I would do this, or I would do that, or like say, go work at a livestock auction first and, and drive some cows or or um, load some wagons and... Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a thing as an experienced cattle hauler, a lot, of, a lot of us, you know, don't have the time, extra time, or take the time to to train people, to train you know guys, and and it's a hands-on, it's a hands-on thing. You just you can't sit in a classroom and learn it because it's there's no way to explain it. Yeah, as far as you know, run your cut gates and and closing gates and never turning your back on cattle and stuff like that. That that has got to be a mindset. You know, you just it's uh it's more of a reflex or a or a, just a sense you know as far as uh cattle i don't know they're just unpredictable and uh as far as new guys i if you want to haul cattle the yeah, uh try to find somebody that uh, that will take the time to to teach you how and 
And if you know how to drive a truck, you know there's there's guys that'll that'll put you in a truck hauling cattle that uh, that'll that are willing to you know run with you or or uh, help you load the first few times to kind of get your feet wet and and uh, that's that's about the only way I know how uh, as far as uh, as far as learning is that uh, you know nobody's nobody's born to be a cow hauler and nobody was born a cow hauler that's everybody's got to learn yeah you know, everybody everybody knowledge. started for the first time of course yeah yeah and I'll never forget the first time I I just about got my lip busted from a cow kicking a gate into me you know I didn't strong arm the gate to when I was shutting it and it kicked it and kicked it right back in my face you know and it, it'll happen quick yeah uh, like you say, always expect the unexpected. Yep, yep. That's right. I, I got a few questions about money-wise, but I think I, I know your answers already. One of the questions is, uh, what would you do if you had a, a whole lot of money? I, I think your answer would be uh, <laughs> I'd a, have a, a nice paint job truck. and uh, <laughs> maybe some new parts for my truck. and. Yeah. Yeah, I'd have more old trucks sitting there in the yard, probably. Yeah, but would you, if you had the money, would you buy a few trucks uh, that are already restored and like make your own museum or? No, I like to do it all myself. I, I, uh, I don't know. It's just kind of a sense of accomplishment, or uh, it's a personal thing as far as uh, you know, building something from nothing, just like building a hot rod car when I was a kid, or. You know, it's uh, it's neat to take an old truck that's been sitting in the weeds and and drag it home and and just start tearing into it mm -hmm. and uh, finding other trucks for parts and and stuff like that. It's just uh, it's all I've ever done. That's what I enjoy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, I think you also make uh, model trucks. Yeah. I've seen that on on Facebook that you uh, posted one or, or several that you made for other people. Yeah. Yeah. I've, Oh, I started that one Christmas for a friend of mine. He didn't have anything to, you know, give his give his boys for Christmas, and I was driving his truck for him. And, and uh, he said, "Let's see if we can make a replica of my old truck." And so we did, and uh, that's where it all started. And I've I don't know how many trucks I've built over the past probably 15 years. Is, I built several replicas for friends of mine as far as uh, like even little winch trucks with electric motors out of a VCR, you know, that'll run the winch line and remote control trucks and and uh, I even built a full scale, it's a 125th scale cow trailer that's fully functional, the gates, the everything and I gave it to a friend of mine's boy that uh, loves trucks and and I got tired of it sitting on the shelf here, so I just gave it to him with a remote control cab over Peterbilt, and uh, he loved it. I would love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I even had a mailbox that I built, and the uh, state highway department made me take it down because they said it was a, a hazard to the traffic. But it was a it was a cow trailer. The cow trailer was the mailbox, and uh, yeah. It was it was probably I don't know three foot long something like that. Mm -mm. Yeah. Yeah, I would have have. I I asked people to make me a mailbox one one time, but I never got a. I never found the right person that could do that weld for me. Yeah. Too bad. Yeah. Yeah. They say that it's uh it's um. He said if if a car hits the mailbox and it and it comes into their windshield or something that you're liable. So it's the, it's, the, everything's gotta it's be a the fault of the car driver. Yep. Everything's got to <laughs> be a standard just like my mailbox out there just on a plastic pole. Mm -mm. Standard mailbox. Life could so much better without any rules. <laughs> I, um, I, I posted a question on our Facebook group out of Cal Trucks and one of the older guys said uh, you should ask everybody the same question, and that's the question: What do you think the direction of the cattle trucking industry is going to be in the future? And of course, we all heard about the ELD. What? Apparently, you don't have any problems with that with this truck. No. But what, what do you think the cattle industry will be? 
of the cattle trucking industry will be even now in 30 years? Well, it's the, the regulations is going to have to change. Cause it, I mean, it's all right now. People still get by with what they need to do. But if they put the squeeze on it, they're only hurting themselves. They're only the only thing they're hurting is the price of beef on the at the grocery stores. I mean, it's if you put a squeeze on the cattle haulers, they're going to have to charge more per mile to you know if they can't run a uh, long distance anymore, and they got to you know use two or three trucks to to run the run the route instead of one truck doing it. That's only going to increase the freight, and that'll increase the price of beef. And it's you see it at the at the store. That's that's the end product. Yeah. Where Somebody's got to pay for it. Yeah. Somebody's got to pay for it, yeah. and and that's consumer. Yeah. So that's going to be me. So I must be against it. <laughs> I I love the steak and the hamburgers. Yeah. That's yep. why I'm I'm in good shape also, between. Here and there. Yeah. yeah, that's what I was <laughs> born and raised on is beef and potatoes, you know, and that's just... Yeah, but they I got like good beef. steak here in, in Texas. They got good, good steak at the Stockyards in Oklahoma also. Yes, sir. I've been there last year and wow. Yeah. I can uh, give everybody the, the, the advice to go eat at Cattleman's in the, in the Stockyards in, in Oklahoma City. Yes, sir. They're pretty good. Yeah, I used to haul out of there so much, I'd haul out of there every Monday and and they've got a, a cleaners, a dry cleaners right around the corner from the stockyards and I'd take my laundry there and have them start and press my clothes and, and uh, I'd leave them there one Monday and pick them up the next, you know. Yeah, yeah. Never even seen home really. So I'd eat up there and, and get my laundry done and haul cattle out of there. So, yeah. yeah. So how long did you stay on the road? Like a month or oh, maybe yeah. longer? Sometimes a month or two. Yep. Wow. Yeah. Usually, usually a week. You know, like when we'd haul out of Mississippi or Florida and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we'd haul two, two loads out of Mississippi and and uh, leave on a Monday and come back Friday or Saturday, and uh, stayed home a day or two. And, and when I was running out of Oklahoma there for Elmhurst, and yeah, I'd stay gone for three or four weeks at a time. And, and uh, not see the house, but I was single the majority of the time, so it it uh, we just worked out fine. Yeah, it works works easier if you're single. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, yeah, it's kind of rough when you're when you're married, and and uh, that happened to me once, but uh, that's the way it goes. Yep, <laughs> that's life. Yep, life. Uh, some sometimes you take the chances and. It works out good. Sometimes it doesn't work good at all. Yep. Yep. And like that friend of mine in Iowa, he's been trucking 55 years. He's been owner operator, and his wife's been right there doing the book work for him, you know, and booking the loads, and and it's worked out great for them. And that's it. All depends on how it works out yep. for the individual. Exactly. Not all right, Mark. Not everybody can do it. <laughs> I'm gonna end this interview. Um, I want to thank you a lot for uh, for your stories and your answers, and uh, you you fill them you fill them in uh, all by yourself. So uh, I didn't have to ask you too many story, uh, too many questions. Yes, sir. So I want to thank you for this uh, interview, and uh, if there's anything that you would like to say that I forgot to ask you, go ahead. All I got to say is keep on trucking. Thank you. Yes, sir.